Hi, I'm Richard. Richard is a senior product manager on the Autodesk Fusion team, and he is currently looking after the constraint components functionality in Fusion. Right, so this question is um, centering a part um, in an opening in an X and a Y direction. Um, so this user is, is coming from an X, currently learning Fusion, and how to do some basic assembly stuff with, with joints. They're driving them absolutely crazy. They just don't understand how they can do it in Fusion. They've used a rigid joint. They were able to center it in one axis, without letting two faces touch, but how do they get the whole thing to be centered in an opening? This is a really common question. Um, so let's dive into a, a simple um, real life example. So I always try and use uh, real life examples. And I actually saw this being demoed um, a while ago um, and they didn't center the servo in the server case. I was like screaming at the screen going, you know, we don't make things size for size. There is always a gap. You have some tolerance on there. And that's where we need to center stuff because we want it centered in there for the sake of CAD, but we know in real life, it will find its own center. We need a bit of wiggle room, but we like to model things in the perfect world. Um, I've stripped out all of the stuff in here to make it as easy as possible. So I've just got the base plate, the floor of the RC car, the chassis, whatever we call it, uh, and this servo. What I'm going to do now is I actually use construction geometry and then use our new constraints tool to bring that together. So let's go and activate this component there. Um, let's do a, a mid plane. Let's choose that face and that flank, that face there. So you can see I've created that mid plane. Um, and then let's do it again. Let's go mid plane here on that face and that face again. So I've now got the two mid planes. Um, on that mounting boss or that area where it's going to go. Let's now put those two construction planes onto the servo themselves. So this is where you could really look at, if you've got like an asymmetrical part, you might maybe need to go off of those two faces, um, or you might need to go off those two faces. You know, um, I'm not going to tell you what you need to do. You're doing the design. You're going to know how do you actually want this thing centered, um, it might not be perfectly centered from a, a bounding box. Maybe it's centered from a center of gravity point of view. You're going to know how you want to center something. Um, so let's now go again mid plane here and let's choose the base of that um, and the top there. So again, I've got these, these nice construction planes now uh, ready for constrained components. So let's go back to my root level, hit constrained components. You know, I want that plane to be aligned to that plane that we've got there. I now want that plane to be aligned to, to that plane. And then finally, we want the base of that part to go flat down onto that. So what I've got now, really nice way uh, of just centering that part in that enclosure. Key thing here, fully parametric. So because I've gone from construction geometry off of faces, I haven't manually typed, you know, I haven't typed a single number in there. If that enclosure changes, the servo changes, as long as it's the faces that I've chosen have moved, the mid plane will stay in the middle and the constraint components will update. So that would be the way I'd suggest doing this. Trick that construction geometry of how you want it to be centered um, and you can constrain them. That's the key, fully parametric, you're not writing in offsets because you know there's a 0.2 millimeter clearance. So you make it flush and push it out by 0.2, always try and send to stuff when that's the case. So hope that was a nice, simple one for that, that, that seemingly um, easy question. But unless you know to go down the route of construction geometry and the new constraints tool, I'm sure you could uh, waste many an hour trying to get that centered perfectly.